Shabbat Shalom, Mishpacha. This is Rabbi Simon. Uh, let's lift up those people that need the prayers. Father, we thank you that we come before you today. We thank you that you've given us life, health, opportunity. You've given us homes to live in, shelter. You've given us vehicles to come and go during the week. And you've given us, most importantly, your love that is with us forever. And Father, as you gave the covenants to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you said that you will always remember the covenant, that you will use those covenants to guard us, to prosper us, to save, to look after us, and to bless us in the future and the present. So Father, I thank you that for your, for your tremendous blessings that you're giving us. Thank you for the tremendous knowledge that you're giving us. Although there's rumors of war, rumors of different things happening in the world, but we thank you that we can look towards you. And we can look towards your Torah, and we can know that your word is eternal, and it's never changing, and it's forever. And we thank you, and I petition for those people that are ill, that Father, you will touch them with your healing touch through your angels, Raphael, that you will touch them and you will heal them. And those that need protection, that you will protect them through your angel, Gabriel. And those that need blessing and prosperity, that you will prosper them through your angel, Mikhail and Uriel. I thank you for that in your precious name. Amen be Amen. So coming back to the uh, present world, what we are seeing, <clears throat> we are seeing an alliance with Russia and with Iran and of course Lebanon, Yemen, you know, all these countries are together and, and of course the Palestinian side as well, I, I guess you could count them as part of the alliance as well. <clears throat> Possibly, of course, Syria, maybe Turkey as well in the near future. So that's the alliance that is forming in the Middle East between these nations because Russia, I guess, you know, observation tells me that Russia has decided that America and the European nations, they are biased towards Russia. They don't like Russia. They are more favoring each other. And also, they have their own agendas, I guess, their own programs what they want to do in Ukraine, and Ukraine is playing a part in their hand. And maybe Ukraine was a area that they were going to use as playground to encroach on Russia. And, and that has kind of backfired a little bit. And maybe UN UN's trying to use that, NATO's trying to use that to, you know, put more of their weapons, maybe more of their spy places in Ukraine so they can monitor Russia in you know, longer term goals I guess <clears throat> on the other hand Israel wants a war Israel's leaders they want a war and I don't know if you know but Jews are living in droves in droves out of Israel they're leaving they're going back to where they came from I think the gig is up Christians who spend millions and millions of dollars maybe even billions to get these people into Israel trying to make believe that you know that's going to bring the Messiah which never happened and we'll come back to the Messiah in a minute so Christians you know money for the last 50 years has backfired it all failed the whole program failed several reasons for that I in fact see a destruction of Israel myself looking at prophecy I see that Israel is going to be destroyed many parts of Israel will be destroyed now to, to be particular about which parts you know I'll have to go to those prophecies and tell you exactly which parts of Israel will be 
come under subjection or, or destruction. And we're not talking about minor destruction. We're talking about heavy destruction where it will make it difficult for people to live there. So that's in the near future, by the way. And if, if Israel pulls this war with itself and Iran, it tried it with Lebanon, and it's already failed because Lebanon is now firing at Israel, drones, missiles, and it's, Israel is finding it hard to control that because their systems have failed and Israel's systems have been infiltrated by Iran. So Israel without America, let me be honest with you, Israel without America is dead. It's, it's going to get nowhere. So does that sound like a country that has God's presence and God's people? Does it sound like that? Think about that for a minute. If America keeps pouring billions of dollars into Israel and billions of dollars of weapons, where is God's hand in this? If you remember, America is playing similar to what Egypt was playing in the ancient times. Egypt was a, a, a powerful nation in the ancient times and Israel will go to Egypt for his help. And God was very angry with Israel that why they need to go to Egypt or Syria for their help. And similarly today, we're seeing the same prospects where Israel keeps getting handouts from America, weapons, money, billions of dollars being sent in, in all forms. I'm sorry, you know, that don't sound like a nation that has God's presence and doesn't have God's presence. And last time I told you that the Ark of the Covenant was actually around in the 11th century. Yeah, it was around. The Jews, at that time, they tried to procure, they had the ark, they tried to take it to Jerusalem, and they tried to use that to win Jerusalem, but they failed. They couldn't do that. And the ark was captured by the Muslims, and then, you know, it was used in negotiations with the Crusaders, at the time, and the Jews, it was used as a negotiation uh, piece. Because what the Crusaders had done, they had blocked routes of Muslim pilgrims, and they had, you know, they were killing people who were trying to go to their uh, pilgrimage. So, plus they had blocked some routes to to their tribal lands. And then the Ark of the Covenant was used to procure safety for the Muslims and to get crusaders to remove their garrisons around these lands that didn't have heavy fight, heavy, you know, Islamic fighters. And so there's more to that. I'm just giving you kind of brief. So now come back to the Messiah point. Or Jesus being the Messiah. And I know some of you were surprised. Some of you may be upset that you don't accept Jesus as a Messiah. And that's okay. You know, I am not fostering on you that you have to believe that Jesus or Yeshua is the Messiah. This is not a requirement. I've never had that requirement before. And it's not a requirement now. Our requirement is Torah. And if you are in Torah, then you're in good standing with God. Okay? Now, the Messiah has different functions. And as I said before, knowing the Messiah or getting an experience with the Messiah is not about logic and science. I can't give you science and say, hey, because of science, you know, ABC, this is the Messiah, DEF. It doesn't work like that. In order to know who the Messiah is, you have to have an existential experience with God. And unless you have that existential experience, you can never know who the Messiah is. That's that. That's the other thing. So, Christians believe that the Messiah plays a role in their salvation. However, I don't believe that and I don't teach that. That Messiah plays a role in your salvation. Messiah, if those of you who believe in Jesus as a Messiah... The role that he plays is in drawing you back to the Torah, to the spiritual Torah, to the 
because there is the written Torah and there is a spiritual Torah. In other words, implementing it in the spirit. A lot of the times people are more worried about the physical and forget the spiritual. So the Messiah's role was trying to explain to people in his time why they could not fight a war and establish a kingdom. Because the Jews believed they could fight a war with the Messiah. You know, they wanted to establish a king. Messiah means a king. They wanted to establish a king, anointed person who is a king, and they could then establish a kingdom. But Jesus, when he came, he said, no, you know, now is not the time. But the Jews did not want to understand that. And they didn't want to accept that. And I, and I feel that this is the same today. A lot of you have a hard time accepting Yeshua, Jesus as a Messiah because maybe due to Christian misteachings. And, and that's okay, you know, I'm not saying that you have to because the covenants are in the Torah, not in the New Testament. The, the, all the covenants are in the Torah and that is sufficient for you who are the, who are the children of Israel for you to be able to, you know, get your orders from God and be able to do the things you want to do and be able to claim the salvation is all through the Torah. It's all in there. It's all done dusted. It doesn't need to be reestablished. It doesn't need to be rewritten. So it is, there is no requirement for you to accept any person on this earth to be a Messiah. When I say a Messiah, I am talking about a king of Israel, a future of Israel. Right now, Israel has no king. Yeah, Israel has political leaders, but they are not the king of Israel because they don't operate in Torah. So until those leaders or a new leader turns up who wants to establish the kingdom of Israel with Torah, that will be the time we'll start to look closely at Israel. Right now, that's not the case. Because right now, everything in Israel is about finance, money, and all that. And you've seen how Yemen has destroyed ship after ship, vessel after vessel, captured them, destroyed them, sunk them in the sea, and have put billions of dollars in the sea. And I see Revelation 18. It doesn't matter whether you believe... And I'm not saying again that you have to believe New Testament is inspired or not inspired. Again, that's it's a fruitless argument. It doesn't need to be even had. However, what I read in Revelation 18 is almost coming to pass in the Red Sea as we as we see it. Now, I'm not saying that the, the Revelation 18 is about present time, but it is a foreshadowing of present time. It is happening as we speak. Ships are being sunk, you know, uh, billionaires are standing off afar and crying that their goods are being destroyed and they can do nothing about it. And it's in the Red Sea. So think about it. Is Revelation 18 at play or not at play? So that's where we are. Now, in terms of Torah, you know, we have the festivals coming up, as I explained so beware, you know, Yom Kippur is around the corner. And then we also going to have the, you know, Arab Yom Kippur or the evening of Yom Kippur 9. Tishri 9 is when the fast starts. is on the 27th of September. And 28th evening is when it completes after 25 hours. And then we, you can have your festival, feast, give thanks, eat, be merry, etc. So that's on September 27 and 28. And again, those of you who are able to fast, who are not on medication, who don't have to take medication every day, you can. And again, if those of you who can't because your health condition or maybe is too long for some people, you know, I usually tell people we are not... In Israel, we don't have the temple over there. And so you do the best you can. If, if it means that you can only last six hours and after that you, you're going to fall apart, then only keep it for six hours. You know, 
come before God and say that this is what I can do under the circumstances that you know whatever reasons you have God can accept that God can understand it so it's not a big deal so that's the fast and then October 3 we're going to have Sukkot day 1 which is a festival of tabernacles on October 3 to October 10 we're going to have the tabernacles festival and by the way the feast of Noah also known as the feast of trumpets is on Tishri 1 which is September 19 we're about 2 weeks away from that festival so be prepared for it remember don't come to God empty handed bring an offering before God so that you can benefit and you can be blessed remember that also as I said that those of you who don't have the Siddur I will encourage you to get the forever Israel Siddur so you can practice you can say the prayers out loud or in your homes by yourselves for instance you know the Torah Brachot the Torah prayer that you do in the morning Baruch at Hashem Hamvarach Baruch Hashem Hamvarach Leolam Vaed Baruch Ata Hashem Eloheinu Malecha Olam Asher HaOlam Asher Bechar Benu Mechul HaAmim Venatan Lanu Et Torato which translates to Blessed is Yudhe Vahe or you can do Baruch At Yudhe Vahe Hamvarach Blessed is Hashem or blessed is Yudhe Vahe the increaser blessed is Yudhe Vahe the increaser for all eternity blessed are you Yudhe Vahe our supreme one king of the universe who selected us Asher HaOlam Asher Bakhar who selected us Benu Mechul HaAmin Venatan Lanu at Torato from all the people and gave us this Torah beautiful wonderful prayer you find in the Siddur and you'll find several other prayers in the Siddur. Buruchata Yudhevahe, Blessed are Yudhevahe, Ve Natan Hatora, Amen, Ve Amen, Giver of the Torah, Amen. So, encourage you to get that so you can do the prayers daily, and that way, if you do them daily, you will be able to memorize them over time. That's the other thing. That's why it's a good idea to do the prayers daily that you may memorize them. Okay? And, you know, as you memorize them, they'll, they'll come, become part of you. So, you know, we'll, we will monitor the situation in Israel because, like I said, it's a developing situation and, and lots of things are going to happen lots of changes are coming so you need to be aware that it's not all rosy over there and those people who chose you know those people who chose to go and live there and I'm talking about not the Gentiles but those people who are the children of Israel who believe that the children of Israel you can see what is happening to them right now. Bombs, missiles, drones are flying over their heads. And, you know, the rest you know. You just pick, you just open a news channel and, and maybe they'll tell you some and maybe they, because there is a blackout, by the way. There is a black, news blackout in the Israeli government has, has deliberately or told all channels there should be a news blackout. They don't want people to see that bombs are flowing over Israel and killing people. And they don't want to see people with their homes being destroyed. Why? Because they built this fictitious story of how mighty they were and how great they are and that they can never be, you know, harmed. And they win all the battles and look what's happening. They've been driven out of the land by their own emotions. And their own greed took them into the land and now they've been driven out. And I'm talking about the Ashkenazi, Ashkenazim, Ashkenazi Jews, the white Jews, also maybe the Sephardi as well. They're also in trouble. And if Yemenite Jews went there, they're also in trouble. Or they're all in trouble. 
None of them is now right now in peace. And I have been saying for how many years I've been saying, do not go to Israel to live there. I said, always have said, go to Israel, do your pilgrimage, you know, go and see the sites, do your prayers and come back to the countries that God has placed you. God has placed you in these countries for a good reason. Because he wants to protect you and he wants to bless you. And when time comes, he'll take you. So let us look at uh, Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah chapter 13 says, The burden against Babylon which Isaiah, Yeshayahu, the son of Amos, saw. Lift up a banner on the high mountain. Raise your voice to them. Wave your hand that they may enter the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for my anger. Those who rejoice in my exaltation. Okay, so there are two types of people that are being raised over here. The mighty ones and the sanctified ones. Then it says that the noise of a multitude in the mountains like that of many people. A tumultuous noise of the kingdom of nations gathered together. And then it talks about the Lord of hosts of or Yudhe of armies musters the army for battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven. Yudhe and his weapons of indignation, or the Lord and his weapons of indignation to destroy the whole land. And then it kind of gives you an interesting hint. Uh, Let me see. In uh, verse 11, it says, I will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will hold the arrogance of the proud and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make mortal rare like fine gold. So... Who is, I mean, who is Horty? Who is the terrible? Question mark. I will make a mortal more rare than fine gold. And then it talks about in verse 17, Behold, I will stir up the meads against them who will not regard silver. And as for gold, they will not delight in it. And their bows will dash the young one, young men to pieces, and they will have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes will not spare children. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldeans' pride, will be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and it will never be inhabited. Okay, so, by the way, this did not happen in the past, where the Medes, who are the Medes? The Medes, you could say, is a mixture of the Iranian people and the Kurdish people. So, and it could even be the Turkic people. They are also mixed in them. So, behold, I will stir up the Medes against them who will not regard silver and they will have no pity on the womb. And then it says, it talks about this place being overthrown, the houses will be plundered, their wives will have wished. It says, everyone who is captured will fall by the sword. Their children also will be dashed to pieces before their eyes, their houses will be plundered, their wives ravished, etc. So, it also says in verse 13, uh, Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth will move out of the out of her place. In the wrath of the Lord. In other words, there will be some kind of earthquake. And in the day of his fierce anger, it shall be as a hunted gazelle and as a sheep that no man takes up. Every man will turn to his own people and everyone flee to his own land. Now, you see, this is something that spoken against Babylon. Now, A lot of people have tried to interpret this. Babylon. Who is this Babylon? And in the past, I have said that this is a kind of a wider confederacy involving, you know, different 
Arab nations, but I'm coming to a different view right now, is that this is not just the Arab nations. This this Babylon, this Babylon that we're talking about over here, is a spiritual Babylon. It doesn't say it's physical. And also the other thing that it says here, which I find quite interesting, is that when it talks about the far country, which far country? You know, that's something to look at. The Lord and His weapons of indignation to destroy the whole land. So, which land they're going to destroy? Well, if it's South, if they're going to destroy Saudi Arabia, let's say as an example, then why would America spend billions of dollars, you know, of construction money? Because you know they have interest in Saudi Arabia and the city that they are building, Neom City. You know, Saudi Arabia spending billions and then America, Germany, France, all these countries have interest in there. So why would they go to Saudi Arabia to destroy it? Because they'll be destroying their own capital. They'll be destroying their own business in, in a way because they want to earn money from it. So this clearly is not talking about Saudi Arabia. This Babylon is not the Babylon as we understand it. There is a spiritual Babylon and by the way, that spiritual Babylon fits more with Israel than anything else. Israel, meaning the present people in Israel, who call themselves chosen with America as a spiritual Babylon. Why? Because, here's the reason why. This Babylon is a deceiving Babylon. Do you understand what deceiving means? It means that they are not who they claim to be. They are deceiving Babylon. They are a spiritual Babylon. And Babylon, remember Babylon was a great nation and a powerful nation. Well, if we are going to ascribe this Babylon to just Saudi Arabia, then Saudi Arabia doesn't fit. Because it is not a very powerful nation. There are many nations much more powerful than Saudi Arabia. I mean Turkey, Iran... Uh, than other nations around are much more powerful than than Saudi Arabia is. Then Saudi Arabia, unfortunately, here doesn't fit the bill. The only nation that fits the bill is, as you know, Israel combined with its so-called allies. And then we maybe we'll look at another time why this doesn't apply to Saudi Arabia why it more so applies to spiritual Babylon being spiritual Egypt, which was which country in the past? Egypt, Mitzrayim? Well, which is it today? It's got to be a very powerful nation. It's got to be a nation that can corrupt with money. It's got to be a nation that can destroy with weapons. Well, there's only one nation that I, I think can do that. It's America, USA. Now, that does not mean that the war will come to USA. It doesn't mean that. It means that the war can come wherever USA is active. If they are active in the Middle East with their bases, then the war will come to them over there. And guess who is attacking? Guess who is attacking the bases of America in the Middle East? I mean, look around yourself. You'll know the people that are attacking it. And and why they're attacking it? Because here there's a glimpse of prophecy is what's going to come and what's come to pass. Now, it clearly speaks about a destruction of a place. It clearly speaks about that place being left desolate for a time. And it also says, it says that, and their bows will dash the young men to pieces. And it says, Babylon, the glory of kingdoms. Well, if, if it was physical Babylon in the ancient days, that would be Iraq, okay? If it was physical Babylon. If it's physical Babylon, then it says it will never be inhabited. Well, did Iraq get destroyed that it never gets inhabited? The answer is no. So it's not talking about Iraq or Iran or those countries around about, Syria, etc. It's not talking about them. It is talking about a country that will remain desolate for a long time. Never doesn't mean that forever. Never, don't assume the never word to be forever. 
never means that for a time, for a period, that could be a hundred years, that could be a thousand years, that it will be desolate, like Israel was in the past. From the time it was destroyed, and Jerusalem was desolate, and it remained desolate for over a thousand years, right? Till, till the 19th century. That kind of desolation we're talking about. And it says that, you know, it talks about it will never be inhabited and nor will it be settled from generation to generation, nor will the Arabians pitch tent there. So it means that these, these, this place, whatever this little country is, this country has Arabians passing through it back and forth, Arabs basically, Arabs passing through it back and forth, and they have access to the place, and maybe their tent over there, you know, place their tents over there. So, very, very interesting. Isaiah 13.11 talks about tyrants. Okay? 13.11, it talks about, Therefore, I will shake the heavens. Or it says, And will lay low the haughtiness of the tyrant. Which, which is a terrible. Well, I don't see Saudi Arabia being tyrant right now. However, I do see some other people being tyrant. Look, look over to Russia fighting Ukraine and look who's helping them and look who's the tyrant and look who's making it look like it's Russia's fault and it's not, you know, Ukraine's fault and, and, and what not. So we have to correctly identify the people, the nations and all this, you know, maybe in the coming weeks, months we will look at that more so. So for now, what's important to understand is that, you know, great things are coming to pass. You know, stay put where you are, be happy where you are, establish your families, establish your businesses, prosper yourselves, okay? God will prosper you where you are. You don't need to leave your countries to go to Israel. There is no call. There is no call for any of you to go to Israel right now. Stay put. In 2024, September, my words have not changed. Stay put. Stay in your country. Unless, you know, unless you belong to another nation, and you go back and forth, and that's understandable. Like, you know, people who come from India, Pakistan, Iran, you know, they want to go back and forth, sure they can, no problem. And they live in America, maybe they can go back and forth, that's no problem. But there's no call for you to be in Israel permanently, okay? So avoid that. Now, let's come back to uh, our uh, meditation session that I spoke about last week. I want you to continue to do the meditation session Every day, as I as I guided you, because that will benefit you tremendously, a lot. Okay, it will benefit you a lot, and I want you to continue to do that. You know, please do that. Continue with it, and uh, you know, don't uh, don't give up on it. Okay, don't don't be like you know, you done it for one day and then you. Maybe, you know, you're happy to do it one day, two days, three days, and the fourth day you stop doing it. Don't do that. Uh, please make sure that you do it every day. I want you to make sure that you're on it, okay? I want you to be on it. So, that's very important. Exercises I gave you. You see, maybe I will do another detailed lecture on this, on, on how to you know, how to do this properly. But right now, what I suggest you to do is, uh, there is a hemi-sync. You know, if you if you search hemi-sync on the, Google it, you'll find some recordings online, some music that's like binaural beats, that is hemi-sync. And I want you to listen to it. Because that will tune your brains to the right frequency then you can, you know, whilst you're listening to the hemi-sync music, you can repeat your affirmations uh, like robotically inside your head. Like, you know, if you're saying, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy. I have $10 million, I have $20 million, I have $30 million. You know, I have $30 million, I have $30 million, I have $30 million. Or, better to say, $30 million finds me, $30 million finds me, $30 million finds me, $30 million finds me. Do it, you know, with the binaural beats, especially with the hemi-sync music. There's, there's plenty of hemi-sync type beats online. So I'd encourage you to find some 
if you're having difficulty, you know, or if you find some and you want to make sure that you got the right one, let me know. I can, you know, guide you to that, which is the right one or not, or I can send you something. And you can listen to it and then do your affirmations. It will greatly benefit you. And I want you to continue to do that. I want you to, when you go to bed at night, um, before you go to bed at night, I, you know, I want you to close your eyes, sit down, close your eyes and say, now that I have what I desire, how do I feel? In other words, if you're looking for a sum of money, you close your eyes and you imagine that you have the sum of money. Now, how would you feel? See, our consciousness, our consciousness, when it's in beta mode, it operates with, you know, facts, figures, things like that. But our subconscious mind does not operate with facts and figures. Our subconscious mind acts with feelings. So how do you get the feeling? Well, when you go to cinema or when you watch a movie, and whilst you're watching the movie, you get that feeling, you know, if the, if the scene is sad, you become sad. If it's happy, you become happy. If it's action, you become all excited. Okay, you know, you're watching Superman or Spider-Man type movies, Batman, you get all happy and excited. So I want you to build the same feeling before you go to bed. You know, you got this sum of money or you got your new house or you got whatever you were asking for, great health or a spouse and you're really feeling happy. And you want that feeling to sink into your subconscious because subconscious does not speak a language. Subconscious does not understand, you know, human languages. But subconscious understands pictures and subconscious understands emotions. So you want to build the right pictures at night and the right emotions. Listen to Earl Nightingale. It's a free recording online, about 35 minutes. Listen to it every day. Listen to it as much as you can. Because it will, it will, you know, it will prime you. Because Earl Nightingale says, take a card, write your goal on it, and then keep it with you. And see it every day. Feel it. And then repeat it in your head, etc. And again, that's a good idea. For those of you just starting out, you know, get that, do that, it will help you. Listen to Earl Nightingale, he explains how to do that. So with that, you know, I'm going to say have a wonderful Sabbath. And again, those of you who want more guidance, who, you know, who are not sure, and, you know, just write to me at my address, shimon63, S-H-I-M-O-U-N-6-3 at yahoo.com, and I'm able to assist you and help you by, you know, guiding you, you know, what kind of meditation. And, I, you know, with this recording this week, uh, like today, when I send this to you, I will include a recording of a music with background music in there that I want you to listen to. It's really soothing music. Somebody gave it to me, and I think it's a good idea. You have it. It's good for. It's great for healing. This company sells this music for healing and other things, and they've given this free version out, you know, for people to listen to and see how they feel. And they wanted people to report back on that. But I want you to listen to it. I want you to do your affirmations with it. And, you know, robotically. And then also those of you who want to make your own affirmation, you know, you're by your own voice, you can open up, you know, download Audacity in your PC. And in Audacity, you can, you know, record a track. And then you can add another track in there. And, you know, you can have one voice playing at a normal frequency. Another voice could be playing a little bit faster, maybe times and a half or twice. And then you add another third track. And the third track may be playing at, at lower speed or maybe lower volume. And you mix the three tracks and you, you know, make out an MP3. And then you listen to it every day. And that will help speed up your manifestation. Okay? So... Have a wonderful day. Great Sabbath. Shabbat Shalom to you. Shalom Shalom to you.